live feed. Uh, I'm here at home on this, uh, what's hopefully going to be a beautiful day today. I hope you guys all had a wonderful <laughs> Easter weekend. And um, my, Melissa is going to be here making sure that, uh, well, she's moderating next to me as well, um, off camera. But um, I wanted to kind of connect with you guys. It's been a, a few days since we did a live feed. <laughs> Chewy is uh, wanting back indoors, so off Melissa goes to let him back in. Um, boy, it's been a, a busy, busy um, last couple weeks. Uh, we have been um, getting ready for this auction sale, which is now officially up and online. If you're not familiar with what I'm talking about with the auction, uh, it, I went around my shop and I took all of the most kind of important and cool and historical things that I had found in the last little bit and uh, decided to put them up for auction sale because uh, Melissa and I are very much hoping to try and find uh, an acreage or something like that. And instead of uh, worrying about how to save out the money, we kind of looked around the shop and said, yeah, if we could just sell a lot of things that we already have. Maybe we can convert that into um, sort of a, a better life for ourselves. So that's the long-term plan here. We'll see um, how it all pans out. Not sure exactly, but that's part of the reason why we'll do the update to kind of see how things are going. Um, Let's see, it was a uh, good Friday. I had a uh, phone call. This is an update on the, the Potter's House. So for those of you that um, have not been on our channel for very long, we did another series where we did a uh, order house clear out a couple uh, years ago now. It's funny how time's flying by. Um, and it was the uh, Potter's House series where we bought an old house and it was full of stuff. And anyway, you gotta go back and watch it. If you haven't watched it, you gotta go check it out. Well, we've had tenants in that house because uh, unlike the musician's house, we ended up buying the whole house um, last time. Uh, we've had tenants in it and the tenants have made a conditional offer and hopefully that will be sold in May. So that'll be uh, fantastic if that's gone. Uh, but of course, you know, they're living in the house right now. Um, the house is possibly going to sell. And what happens on Good Friday? I get a phone call from the tenants saying um, sewer line is backed up in the basement. We've got raw sewage starting to seep up through the drain in the basement. Well, that's not good news. So <laughs> not only am I worried about the tenants on Good Friday, do you imagine trying to make like a turkey or something and you have that smell wafting out of your basement? Not a good scene. Um, so I wanted to get somebody over there to fix it. The problem is small town, nobody answers their phone. The plumbing companies, they don't have a 24 hour hotline or anything like that. So I am, uh, I'm stressing, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, like what am I gonna do to get these people taken care of? So I phone, uh, I phone, the city uh, emergency number, I guess, like if your fire hydrant's blown up or whatever. And he says, oh, you gotta talk to Paul, who's got a, who's got a truck that can uh, blast air down the line and clear out the main line. Um, well, Paul isn't answering his phone. <laughs> so I phone back and I say, uh, cause you know, it's good Friday, right? I said, uh, you got his phone number, you got a cell phone number? And he's like, I don't, but I know somebody who might. And so anyway, um, the nice thing about a small town like that is that they all kind of know um, each other. And anyway, I get this cell phone for this guy and it's Good Friday and he says, uh, it's kind of, you know, they're answering and kind of saying like, how did you get my number? I'm like, well, the town said you would be the guy to call to clear out backed up sewer. He's like, huh, they did, did they? <laughs> so um, anyway. Uh, we got to chatting and I told him what house it was. And he's like, oh, is this Alex? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh yeah, we met. We met when we did the walkthrough of the Potter's house back in the day. And I've watched some of your YouTube and that. So anyway, uh, he's like, yeah, don't worry about it. We'll get a truck over there. So within about an hour or so, he came by. It was a couple hundred bucks. He blasted out the main line and they got back to life as normal. But boy, I tell you, I was at the store. Actually, this was on Saturday, not Good Friday. It was on Saturday uh, because I was working the store. So I have customers there who probably think I'm like, frantically texting, I don't know, like looking up what Macaulay Culkin's doing nowadays on the internet or getting lost down a rabbit hole. But meanwhile, I'm trying to find some guy to fix a plumbing problem so these people can enjoy their Easter weekend. We got it all fixed though. Um, so I had a little bit of stress there. <laughs> that, that, that got me a little uh, freaked out for a bit. Um, and yeah, we were able to get it fixed up, thankfully. Uh, I had a good busy day at the store. Um, we have uh, some plumbers actually coming by my shop because we are getting very close to pouring the foundation at our building. And if you're uh, not aware, we are putting up a little cafe coffee shop kind of thing uh, right next to our store. But we have to make sure that all the water and drain lines and all that stuff are in the right places uh, before we pour the cement pad. Uh, that's what's going to happen. We're going to uh, meet up with them 
maybe today. I don't know. He was going to text me. It'll probably happen while I'm on the live feed. He'll probably like write me and say, hey, I'm at your shop. Where are you? <laughs> he was going to give me a heads up so we could meet over there today and figure out where the uh, other lines need to go. We'll get that done and then foundation is going in. End of May, folks. It's all happening so quickly. So by the time May rolls around, we'll hopefully have sold the Potter's House and we'll start construction on the new building. So everything is working out swimmingly for this year. Uh, I'm really looking forward to it. But um, the, the game plan right now um, is going so well. Uh, Blues Drummer says, hi from Torrance, California. I think I have a Lost World Pinball manual if your machine doesn't have one. Uh, I don't have a manual for my Lost World Pinball machine. And, and uh, good job noticing it was a Lost World machine. That's really cool. That's the only machine I've got that's working 100% right now in the store. Um, okay. So without further ado, I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to go on a visual field trip with you guys to my iPad where we're going to look and see how stuff is going. Um, so bear with me here. The production quality, <laughs> there's very little quality editing happening here right now. But here we go. So if you are online right now and you go to uh, kauctions.ca, you're going to see this kind of logo here. And it's the Stan Reynolds Museum Artifacts Collection. Now, if you don't know who Stan Reynolds is, you can just Google him. He was uh, quite the collector and has a museum in his name. A fairly, very major museum, actually, which is primarily transportation related. So we were able to get all these artifacts because uh, he owned them privately. Although they were at the museum for years, they were retained by the family. So the, the first few lots that we've got up, these are Mayan uh, jade carved beaded necklaces. So it's sort of like raw jade that's formed into beads. Um, they're strung just for display. You could actually string them to wear, I'm sure. Uh, it looks like the bid prices are around 20 bucks each right now. Um, these necklaces are normally like in the 600 to thousand dollar kind of range usually. So some things are going for some very fair prices right now. Um, so there's a, a lot of room left on those. And they had quite a collection of them. And then you start getting into this. Um, this piece is, is kind of an unfortunate part of history. This is a, uh, a Spanish, um, it's basically a Manila. It's a slave trade bracelet. And people were, you know, as part of that history, they were, they were sold based on the number of Manilas that they had. Or, you know, it's a, a sad part of history, but it is a part of history nonetheless. Uh, there's the Incan copper blade. Uh, and it says it was found in Manabi, Ecuador at some point. So it's kind of nice that the museum still had some of the tags on it. Really, really neat uh, artifacts. But uh, aside from a lot of the ancient items which we have uh, going through, there are, I'm going to see if I can sort this to see kind of what the top items are right now. Mm, I'm going to sort right there. And we are going to sort by bid amount descending. And that should give us an idea of what the top items are. So um, this is definitely the star of the show. Um, this... Uh, Jade mask is life-size. Oh boy, you can't really focus too close on it, but that's a life-size mask. Um, and yeah, they they sell sometimes between 45,000 and 65,000 bucks. So at 5,500, somebody will still get a, a decent price. This steam tractor I actually had at my store. Um, this was built by the folks that made, uh, that had McLeod hardware stores back in the 30s. Um, Mr. McLeod himself built that and uh, was sitting on display in the family's living room for years and years. Uh, it is meant to be an operable steam engine. In fact, it's so big, you could probably stand on the back and ride it around. Um, you'd have to be leaned over a bit, but it's quite a cool piece. So uh, the Civil War um, relic pistol, I shouldn't say relic. It probably could be made into a firing gun with very little effort. But that's a 1863 Colt, model 1851, uh, and it's got a 1870s Richard-style conversion on the chamber. Anyway, that's a good piece. The little cannon, the the dally. Um, this this is one that might really take off. Um, you might be surprised to to think that this would be a really good piece, but this is, if you can see it, the Tutelo Tribe and Language by Horatio Hale. Now, um, Horatio Hale um, visited with the last surviving member of the Tutelo Tribe. This would be, I think, in the Michigan kind of area. And uh, somebody's going to correct me, I'm sure. Um, I'm just going from basic memory here. Uh, but he sat with them, and the last surviving member, they took the translation, the, their language, and they translated it into English. And so it's an actual full account of this lost indigenous language. I'm sorry, yes, that was a Picasso, not a Dali. My, my mistake. That's what happens when I scroll by really fast. Um, so the cool thing about this is it's signed by Horatio Hale himself. Uh, these were given out to educators. In this case, this was given to a reverend. Um, probably a missionary of some kind. 
I don't even know of another copy being offered for sale. So something like this could go for thousands of dollars to the right person. Um, it's at 400 already. That's a good start. But for somebody who's really into antiqu antiquarian books or these little uh, sort of leaflets, incredibly rare piece. Um, we've got the 10 foot by 15 foot um, authentic Canadian flag. So that's from 1870. It's only the, you know, right after Confederacy and Canada's, I think, um, fifth year of having its own flag. We used to use the red ensign. Of course, they photographed it in reverse. The, uh, the um, union part should be on the left. But anyway, you get the idea. So there are all sorts of wonderful things from pepper box. Um, there's World War I German cavalry swords, vintage books, uh, you name it. Oh, and my son Stephen has some of his art there too, and it looks like it's getting some good bids, which is um, great for our kiddo because uh, his amazingly cool sort of pop art and funky art is doing well, and that's all going towards uh, him getting a car. But these are some of the uh, most historic things that I think I've had come through my shop, but uh, we were at a space, there's a nice jade um, Asian carved statue right there. Um, train lanterns, muskets, a ball and chain, another one of my son's pieces. It's nice to see that Stephen's art is right up there with, you know, some ancient artifacts. Incidentally, that, uh, that pre-Columbian Jaguar uh, Matet, Costa Rican uh, Matet, should be somewhere around six grand or so when it ends. But we'll, we'll see. All, right now, it's just a uh, complete guess what this stuff is going to go for. Um, Hand-colored Western Pioneer photos, you know, big sailing ship model, American Revolution era brown bass. That, that's a good find right there. Um, you name it. Like this is basically a, all of, all items that could very well be in a museum that are up here on display. I'm going to scroll very quickly up to the top. So if you all just got seasick just then, well, sorry about that. Um, I think they also tagged in um, at the end of this auction. I'm going to go there. I think, yeah, they put in some of the uh, the hockey and baseball cards and stuff that we had at the last sale. There were some that were unsold. So I think they actually did tie in some um, sports cards at the end there just because they're like, hey, well, you know, Alex has an auction sale going. Um, the other thing, no, this is none of this is from the musician's house. Um, none of this is from the music. Uh, I don't think anything in here is from the musician's house. This is this is my own stuff from the store. Um, there are original works of art from the 1970s. Um, Richard Fulger signed serigraphs. Um, Richard Lacroix and uh, a lot of these pieces, uh, Vasarelli's. These are all like in the Museum of Modern Art. If you're not into modern art, it shouldn't matter. Um, well, I guess if you're not, you're not into it. But if you're an investor or somebody interested in this kind of stuff. These are all pieces that are probably worth thousands of dollars each, and they're only at 17 bucks right now. So if somebody was going to speculate on the things at the auction, uh, Victor Chikatsky, a uh, Saskatchewan artist, um, famous for sculptures, actually, but he's got a sense of humor. But his original studies and drawings are actually quite collectible. Um, he's a listed, well-known artist. There's all these great pieces of art um, that are going through. There's the uh, Mississippian carved stone frog, 90 bucks. There, there's a lot of really interesting pieces. Um, this is, uh, I, it was labeled as being mastodon tusk bracelet, made at least in the 1800s. Um, that's an Inuit piece. Just so many cool items here. But the, the, the other thing, as I was saying, the artwork that's going through um, is all original. There's the one with the cat. A lot of people were asking about Autumn Triptych by Johnson, 1989. Uh, Roy Kiyuka serigraph. Um, it's called Haida. It has some water damage. But all of these are pieces that are in a lot of context, you know, in the $1,000 up kind of range normally. So for 15 bucks each, you're getting some really great deals. Um, there's ancient Inuit bone carved figures. Boy, is there an awful lot of stuff. So um, I guess we'll see. We'll see how things go over. Um, we'll, uh, we'll see. There's always some surprises. Some things go uh, higher than you expect. Some things go lower, but, um, it's worth having a look through that sale anyway. Oh, that's awfully, <laughs> I'm going to move that up a little bit because it seems like I'm framing myself there. Um, there we go. Uh, there's, you never know how an auction is going to go guys. It's uh, just one of those things to, oh boy. Um, you just wait and see and cross your fingers and hope that it does well. 
Um, Steam Tractor is one of my favorite pieces there. I'll be sad that that actually is going because I had that at the store. We also put through a whole bunch of folding cameras we got from the camera, uh, folding uh, camera collection that we bought, uh, military items. There's a, a Hopi indigenous pod. I mean, the stuff is so cool, guys. Anyway, go and have a look. Um, so far, it looks like the, um, the bids are coming in slow, but sure. Oh, incidentally, uh, I'm just looking here. This whale piece that my son did, um, it's huge. Like that's a big piece. I quite like it. It's one of, one of my more favorite pieces that he did, but that whale, I don't know if they, yeah, uh, 29 by 41. That's pretty darn massive. And it's only 20 bucks right now. Oh, there's, um, there's a few pieces in there that I think will go over well. Um, but so yeah, the auction has been, uh, the Wolf Originals are not original soapstone. Wolf Originals are cast soapstone. Um, but there are real soapstones in this auction as well, and I think that should that should be notated in there as well. Sorry, you said there's a ma uh, Madame mm. Rack <coughs> chair, like a rocking chair or something. Oh yeah, there is a chair from Madame Rack in there. Yeah, there's there's one piece from Madame Rack's, and that is the rocking chair. Um, it's funny, you know, I, I was looking around our store, and we still have items from. Um, uh, boy, we still have items from the Potter's House that uh, that are turning up around the store. Um, yeah. It's just uh, crazy how much stuff we've uh, acquired and are sitting on. But this is the year that everything everything starts taking place this year. The the, the pieces start getting put in place. The building's going to go up. Um, we're going to look at transitioning from our house to hopefully an acreage at some point too. Um, you know, we're putting plans in motion. And uh, boy, oh boy, we are still uh, we are still trying to get everything all caught up and done. But... Let's see, the other exciting things that have been happening, um, let's see, have not heard back from the blacksmith yet about the uh, um, uh, Mackie Mintle, somebody's writing, <laughs> have, have not heard back about the, um, um, the, the gate that we're planning on getting done at the store yet, hopefully we'll have that done soon, but uh, all right, I'm going to try and answer some questions now and uh, just chat with you guys in general just to see how you guys are all doing and see if I can answer any questions. Oh, Han says, wishing you well with your plans. Thank you, Hans. Brett said, can you guys create a thumbnail type thing we can share on different social medias? Not just a link to the auction, but of Alex's description since they're so detailed. I don't know how to do that. Oh. Um, Did you hear it? it yeah, I heard. I know the auction doesn't give me much room to actually... No, if that they can share. Like that there's a link that they can... Oh, share. it's already on my Facebook page. Um, the link is posted on our Facebook page. It said not just a link, but of the description since they're just so detailed. Oh, uh, maybe what I'll have to do instead of typing... Because there's 500 lots. I don't know if I could do a play-by-play -play -play for each and every one. But we'll, um, we'll, we'll try and think of a way to, uh, to, to get some better descriptions out there, even if it's just verbally. Uh, Elaine says you look tired. Yeah, well, I, I don't know. I've, I've got a lot going on. I guess I have been tired lately. <laughs> Our closet woke us up this morning really early. <laughs> yeah, we had a we had a poster rolled up in the in our closet and it fell over at like three in the morning or something. And so we we're like, what's going on? Um, so we're still kind of, um, you know, still waking up. This is from Heather. Um, let's see. Uh, Karen says. Uh, the homeless guy you helped a while back, how did he do with his GoFundMe? Well, uh, Adam is his name, um, and uh, Adam is doing quite well. He's actually uh, back working full time. Uh, he's able to see his family. Uh, everything seems to be going pretty well for him, and uh, I think the GoFundMe helped him uh, get himself back on track. Um, and so, yeah, he did well. Um, I, I chat with him regularly. He's just... Uh, at this point, he's just a regular guy working uh, drywall and working construction sites and, um, and, uh, and back, back at it like normal. So I just wish him, I wish him well. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't want to keep dragging him through a, a bad period of his life. So um, I don't usually talk about it too much because <laughs> he's back uh, at it and life is normal for him now. Uh, but anyway, Karen, yes, he's doing quite well. Um, I'm trying to think about what else is going on. Um, the last oh, the last auction. Um, I did cover it off on a live feed before, but the last auction sale did, I think, $70,000 roughly. Um, after auction fees and everything like that, uh, we were able to bring some home. But of course, a portion of that went to go towards setting up the Madame Rack Fund, which we have to write a check for um, after this weekend. So I'm just getting a, a tally on, on what the balance is that we, that we owe, and then it'll be good to go. Um, we had a question here. Final oh, said five pictures are still missing at the end of the auction okay i'll um i'll get them to add some pictures on uh, i'll write them today thank you for that 
Uh, I was visiting, uh, Jolene Bruce says, how's the paint job on the Jag coming along? Um, on April 1st, I posted a picture that um, the slightly mismatched color of the hood of the car was driving me crazy, and I showed a picture of my Jag all sanded down. If you don't know that I ended up getting my dream car, um, you have to go to a video called uh, Abigail Has Magic Powers, and uh, that's how we did the reveal for that. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the car is in getting a paint job. Um, the front uh, clip is basically like a third or almost more of the, the car. Um, so when it's a different color, it's like having half your car slightly different shade. It was driving me crazy. So it's in getting painted. Um, they said it's going in for final prep today and then uh, probably painted in the next few days. So it should be coming back to me before too long. I'm excited for that. Um, the uh, Tutelo language is a dead language now, yes. Um, so that's why somebody was asking about the significance of that book, um, that it is uh, a language that no longer exists. And so having a, a firsthand account of the last translation of that language is pretty darn cool. Um, let's see, what, what year and model is the Jag? I've been asked. Uh, it is a 1968 uh, Jaguar E-Type 4.2 liter, 2 plus 2, which means it has two little jump seats in the back, but it's a Series 1. Um, and why that's important, the Series 1 is probably the more desirable of that type of Jag because it has cleaner body lines, uh, it has the thin chrome bumpers, and it's got glass-covered headlights. It's kind of the one that if you're going to have an E-Type Jag, you want to get a Series 1. 2 plus 2 is a little less desirable, but uh, for me, I actually don't mind having a little extra space in the car. It's, uh, it's nice, and I like it. So now it'll be a nice clean car when it's done. The, uh, the Rolls-Royce is um, hopefully going to be done this week or next. They're just waiting on two little bits. and All we're waiting for is for them to hook up a uh, windshield washer pump, and then it should be done. So uh, I should have a really good update video on that car coming soon. Uh, I'm just The big update I'm waiting for is me driving the thing out of the shop, so that would be good. Uh, and no, uh, Cyril uh, Woolring says, I thought the paint job was an April Fool's Day joke. No, it was... It was not. Um, yeah, it is. Uh, boy, oh boy. Uh, somebody says, will Adam be employed in the new construction as he has skills? Well, he would be if he didn't live across the country, country from us. Um, when we when we helped Adam out, uh, his family was from uh, Ontario. So we sent him back home to be closer to where his kids and his mom and everybody was. Uh, so that's where he is. Uh, I've offered for him to come help me out on job sites, but... Um, you know, he's, he's on the other side of uh, North America. So at some point, perhaps we'll have here. Uh, Nick's saying, what's happening here? Sorry for my ignorance. We're just answering questions right now. I did sort of an auction. Uh, uh, we went over some of the auction pieces earlier in the video and we're just doing a um, Q and A chat right now. Uh, will you have the Jag? Will you sell the Rolls ASAP? It depends. Um, I would like to actually drive the Rolls at least one summer before we uh, think about selling it. Uh, truth be told, if that if it was the difference between us getting our dream property and having to keep that car, uh, if any of you guys know me, it's that even if I like something, nothing is so sacred I wouldn't sell it if it means that it would benefit our family. So yeah, the, the rules could potentially be up on the block, but I'm hoping to do enough other things in terms of auctions and selling off whatever I can to raise the money myself. So we'll see. Yes. I can't, I don't know how to pronounce her name, but she said, I know Axel Rosa's manager. I sent the link to, of the auction to her because Axel collects stuff like that. Oh, well, that'd be cool if Axel Rose was bidding on stuff at our auction. I mean, really, it's the only chance a person will get for a long time to, uh, um, to get stuff like that. Um, and Tara says, does your son want to follow in the footsteps of Robert Bateman? I don't, not in the sense that, um, I mean, Robert Bateman was a very successful artist, but he was a realist uh, who did animals. And I think Stephen's got his very own unique, interesting style. Um, maybe he would follow in his footsteps in the, in the way of hopefully becoming a successful artist. Of course, Robert Bateman made most of his money off of selling prints of loons and deer and whatever else, uh, and not off the originals. But, um, I don't know. Stephen has lots of other old interesting, uh, not old, but Stephen has lots of other interesting, um, things that he'd like to pursue down the road. So, uh, art is just one of them. Uh, let's see. Did we ever find out how the last, uh, auction went? Yes. I just mentioned it, Lynn. You'll have to scroll back. We talked about that already. Um, let's see. Have you thought of an old Bentley? Um, yeah, I mean, a Bentley is essentially just a Rolls Royce with a different grill. Um, you know, Melissa is not a fan of Rolls Royces or Bentleys or things like that. She thinks they're a stuffy old man car. Yep. And uh, like a Mr. Peanut would drive around. Yep. Oh, you know, with the pinky up and the gray poupon and all that. And she's like, that doesn't fly. We're more uh, like 
I think it's that. Melissa wants to get chickens and have more of a farm kind of life near the city. Um, well, not a whole farm, just a Not garden, a whole farm. She wants to have a big garden. And and, land. Yeah. She wants to have chickens and land. Those are going to be... I'm going to need Ashley, Josh's wife, to help me with that. How big is this chicken coop going to be? We're going to have muscly leg There's chickens. There's only like <laughs> five chickens. We have, if you have free range chickens that have like an entire field to run around and they'd be able to like thumper foot you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't know. There's no real car. The car that I was, everybody's recommending cars that I might want to get at some point, but the, the car that I liked the looks of the best was the, uh, the roll, uh, not the rolls. I'm sorry, the Jag. And I have that now. And so, um, I don't know. I don't feel the need to go out there and track down another car. Did you see the peeps car posted on your Facebook page? Uh, that no, I'll have to check that out and see. Um, okay, so I guess that's, I'm just trying to think about everything that's going on. It's been such a whirlwind. You know? I think that if somebody wins uh, one of Steven's paintings and it's too big, they can probably take it off the frame and roll it, right? They could probably roll it, but I, I think that would, they're fairly light. So even if you wrapped it in cardboard, it wouldn't be that expensive to ship, I don't think. Um, oh, Jody says, if you thought about what would happen to your shop if you died or when you get old? Well, that's morbid, Jody, but yes. Um, Melissa has told me many times that if I kick the bucket, she's just going to call Caster and they're going to sell everything off. Yep. <laughs> Sorry, um, you better not kick the bucket. Yeah, I mean, I don't I don't know what my long-term um, plan is for the shop, really. I Plus, mean, you don't care much once you're gone. <laughs> I will haunt you. No, yeah. I'm, yeah. no, it doesn't matter to me. The the things that matter most to me in life right now are making sure that my wife and kids are looked after for now and, and for some time and that Melissa and I will have a chance to, um, you know, basically live our best life and retire and have some money in the bank and not really stress out about things. That's all anybody ever really wants, right? Yeah. So right now we're trying to chase those things that, um, that matter most to us and that's, um, you know, family time and you know a property that hopefully will be a great place to to continue to raise and have kids and eventually have grandkids come visit so we're kind of chasing those things that matter most to us in life when it comes to the stuff in the store it's just stuff you know i i am a, a middle man a middle person that finds um, historical cool or interesting items new or old and try to get them into new people's hands that's what any store is and so um if the day came and something happened to me or if um, we decided not to have the store anymore, we would just sell it all off. It's no big deal. Um, let's see. I'm uh, just going to read some more questions here. Oh, Victoria, I see you on. Um, let's hope I have a long life. I am. I have to get in touch with uh, James. His, his wife, uh, Victoria, watches our channel and I wouldn't mind actually going back to visit. They had a quite a good book collection and variety of antiques and things. So uh, if you are watching, <laughs> um, give us a shout at the store because I got to go back to your place. I know they've been uh, dealing with Josh and giving him some tools and stuff out of the basement, which has been great for him. Um, how do you, oh, Thomas says, Melissa, how do you like your new Volvo? Oh, all in caps was, was the smart. Yeah. Do you want to come sit next to me? Okay. Melissa's going to come join me. She's right here anyway. I'm very slowly pushing my chair over. Let's see if I have any rainbows on my forehead. There she is. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Chewy. Chewy. Chewy, come. He sees us talking to our phone. No, he's looking at insane. birds outside. Oh, yeah, you're right. He is. He's watching that. birds. So the Volvo is fantastic. Thank you for asking. Uh, I haven't gotten completely used to it yet, <laughs> but it's a pretty smooth little ride. It uses way less gas than my other Volvo. So, like, considerably less gas hey yeah it's it's a really good fuel efficient vehicle yeah it's i have super fancy so i have a rule about cars uh that whatever car you own you should know how to change your tire with only the tools that you have within your vehicle and i haven't done that with this one i took it on a highway drive and the whole time i was thinking oh i didn't practice but no flat tire everything was good <laughs> and i still haven't tested it out yet but if you guys have a vehicle you should try it <laughs> uh it's not a hybrid no but it's a it's Pretty fuel efficient. It's it's a pretty decent vehicle. We drove for an hour, and normally that would take, or I mean, two hours, and normally that would have taken a, almost a half tank of gas, and it only took a quarter tank. So <laughs> I was completely shocked, and it has a cheaper floor gas too. Uh, let's see. We'll try and answer a few more questions before we log out today. Uh, with regard to the addition of the store, I assume the cafe will be open later than the store. I'm wondering how you will be locking down the store and keeping the coffee shop open later. Um, that's a great question. Our new building is going to be its own separate building. It's an addition technically, 
but it's only adjoined by a small, maybe a three foot long and four foot wide hallway that will connect our store to the new building. Uh, with that, we're putting in uh, double latching steel doors that will separate the two spaces, fireproof doors, and we'll be able to lock off the cafe side from our store side. We decide to close early and the cafe stays open later. Um, that's not gonna be an issue. We can just lock and close our building and totally separate space. Yeah, and if it ends up being rented to somebody else, then that'll keep them yeah. happy that we can't open their door. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's see, we'll answer some other questions for you guys. Will Jason ever play the piano for us, please? Possibly, we'll see. Um, there are some uh, episodes I think we've got Jason playing, but we'll we'll see if he'll want to come back on and do some. Uh, uh, he said, the peach jam I bought is very good, I recommend it. Oh good, yeah. I, the, think it, I got the strawberry peach, it was good. I haven't tried the peach though. The, yeah, the jam, the honeys, all that stuff that we have at the, the shop, we try and carry good quality local pr products. And I'm so happy that we're able to support lots of locals in our area. I'm too. not a fan of honey at all. And I don't mind that honey. I, I tried the, we have a honey with cinnamon in it. What yeah. is it called? Creamed honey? Creamed honey with cinnamon. On toast? That's pretty good. Yeah, and... some, some buttered toast with some of that creamed cinnamon honey on there. I don't understand there. why it tastes better, but it does. It tastes like cinnamon toast bread. It's really good. Yeah, but yeah. better. Um, Hi from Scotland. Uh, let's see. Uh, Geo says, I have an old French book, but I can't recall what it's about. I'll see if I can share it via email. Okay, cool. Um, is insurance expensive on your store? Not terribly. I mean, it's going to start getting expensive if we had any other break-ins occur, but for right now, it's not too, too bad. Um, we have a, it, there it's called AAA. Why do we don't call it AAA? What do we call it? AMA. C AMA or CAA. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But we do have uh, one. <laughs> Stephen Cook, the Mesoamerican frog is actually up at auction right now. You can go on to uh, Kastner's, kauctions.ca, and bid on it until the 24th. So right now it could be anybody's. My college studies are, uh, they're not going yet. My new courses start on the 12th. So I'm trying to prepare for that craziness. <laughs> Um, Madam Rax house is not completely done yet. You'll be able to watch the, um, the renovations on Hans's channel. He's been uh, doing some work over at the house. Um, I'll see if the owner of the property let me come and do an update video at some point so you guys can see how it's looking. I don't know if they're planning on selling it. I think they're planning on keeping it and maybe uh, using it for something else. So, um, can't give you a full update on that, but we'll try and uh, do an update down the road too. They said they didn't see the frog. You saw the frog when you were going through the scan through, didn't Yeah, you? the frog's there. It's a uh, Mississippian frog is why you, you have to search for and the frog will come up. It's not the greatest picture of it, I must say. I'll put a link to the auction again, uh, but it's K, Kastner Auctions, kauctions.ca. Um, I don't, I have lots of pocket watches in store right now. Somebody's just asking if we have lots of watches. I don't have much for wrist watches, but um, hopefully we'll get some more back in. I'm always trying to find, I would like to try and find some old Rolexes if I can. So if you have a drawer with an old Rolex in it. <laughs> It doesn't have to be working, working or not. We buy that kind of stuff. Uh, hello from Ontario. Antiques from Karen said, uh, I sent you a message about a hoarded house I'm working through. You guys are lucky to have so many great friends to help you sort through it. Yeah, it's a big job to go through those um, hoarder situations right now. Um, has the sale gone through on the Potter's house? We are just waiting for um, May to come around and hopefully everything will be finalized then. Um, the name of our of our auction, it's Kastner Auctions and it's the Stan Reynolds um, artifacts sale, because most of the stuff came from a collector named Stan Reynolds. Um, how much did your last Madam Rack auction bring you in? I hope it went well for you. Um, it went, everything went for about $70,000 and then the auction takes their percentage. So they took a pretty good chunk of that. Uh, and then from that, we're take, giving a percentage of that to um, ARMTA, uh, which incidentally, if you haven't gone on, you can uh, make a donation as well. Um, ARMTA is the Alberta Registered Music Teachers Association, which Betty Joan Rack, Madam Rack, was a member of for over 50 years. Um, we are setting up a scholarship fund. Actually, it's already been set up, um, and um, we're it's in place. So Maybe if you, you can add the link in the description. Yeah, I don't know if we have any moderators in right now that can add the link or not. Well, it's, um, it's me and Heather, I think, and I okay. don't know how to do that. <laughs> I know it. Our usual Matthew is the, the guy who's super quick. Melissa's going to look for it right now and see if she can add it in here. Um, but if you what wanted to uh, contribute to the Madam Rack Fund, uh, you can go to, um, it's the, just A-R-M-T-A. And it should come up. Melissa's just looking it up right now. A-R-M-T-A. 
there you go, dot CA. You guys, the struggle is the, real. Uh, <laughs> Melissa's working on it. And then there should oh be a gosh. link. Um, Find a if you scroll down, there. it's right oh, there. I see it. Click to donate. Betty Joan Rack Piano Scholarship Fund. Hang on. I'm gonna I'm, click and then I'll just copy wait, wait, the link. Wait, 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 wait. I'm gonna see, wait, wait, I'm gonna do this. Okay, go back. Oh, you said wait, but then I didn't wait. Okay, this is what it looks like. Oh, there I we go. I just went to A-R-M-T-A, -A -A, and then when you scroll down, it has a picture of Betty Joan, and yep. you just click it, and then this is where I'm gonna go to get you guys the link. Oh, wait, but where, show where the donate button is, I guess. Mm, so it talks about uh, Betty Joan Rack, and then sign in. Oh, wait. Um, they can they can set up a sign or anyway there's a place to donate there anyhow um, so we've had uh, people write us and say that they had a, a music teacher that um, made a big difference in their lives or they had um, you know really enjoyed the story and and so with that we've had a lot of people uh, donate which I really really appreciate so it's just our way of trying to set up a legacy fund for Madame Rack um, and so she's remembered for more than just her collecting and more for her um, messy home oh Melissa just put the the link up there too yeah we try to remember these people for who they truly were and she would have wanted to be remembered as being a music teacher and uh, inspiring many children throughout the years and many adults as well. Grandma's gone crafty said glad to great to meet you on Thursday. Oh nice to meet you as well. She came in and introduced herself at the shop. I think a lot of people are surprised when I'm actually working at the store. They're like oh I didn't expect to see you there and then I'm like vacuuming or windexing <laughs> showcases. I'm like yeah I work here. <laughs> it's literally you guys it would be like you having your regular lives and you just picked up a camera and decided to share it with everyone. So people are amazed that that's really what's happening. <laughs> oh, did we miss a super chat? I don't think so. Maybe just click on oh, that here. one. Want to know if you bought the Red Plymouth, uh, Deb asked. That was in the garage? Not yet. They have to check with the family and uh, don't worry, we, we're answering the super chat right now. I know a lot of people were saying, answer the super chat. <laughs> um, that Red Plymouth was apparently original paint, which is phenomenal. That car is in like... I wouldn't say mint condition because it's in a barn and flat tires and all that stuff, but it's in really good shape. Um, they wanted, I think, $6,000 for it, but it needs brakes, it needs tires, it's not safety, so it's gonna need quite a bit of work. Um, it's probably worth six to 8,000 when it's totally on the road and running, uh, but it's a four-door sedan, it's a three on the tree, which means it's a manual and you have to shift on, it's a column shift. So it's not a very desirable car with this line six engine. Um, so I wouldn't want to pay basically full price for a car that needs a whole bunch of work. So I left it where it was, but if they come down on the price a bit, maybe I'll be able to bring it home. We'll see. Do you want a 66 Plymouth Barracuda? Oh, that's the big, big window Barracuda. Um, no, not really. <laughs> I don't need another car right now. I mean, if I find one in a barn, like I found that Plymouth in the barn, then you're kind of like, well, you know, it's, it's fun. You watch it get pulled out of the barn, you do a little restoration mm -hmm. on it, and then maybe find a new home for it. But for me, uh, I'm not looking for a whole lot of other extra vehicles right now. We live in just like a, literally a, a city house with the normal little garage yeah. and lots of neighbors. So every time a car comes home, we have to try to figure out. We can't find room for anything. Yeah, there's right now, we're a little squishy, so. <laughs> a two car garage there. It looks like you've got some takers on your Cuda. So there you go. There might be some people out there. Um, uh, it is a slant six, I, th I believe it is. Hopeless gr gra Garage says 6,000 is a little bit steep. It is, yeah. Um, Want to dig through a 100-year-old gas station in New York? Oh, that would be awesome. Uh, if we could go to New York. If I could go to New York, I certainly would. It's, it's too challenging to travel uh, out of country right now with the, uh, the rules in place. But we would love to go and dig through an abandoned gas station. Oh, you're killing me. I'd love it. <laughs> hey, but if you're doing it, send me pictures and maybe I'll buy some stuff off you. Remember, oil cans, old signs, even paperwork from the gas station that has the letterhead of the gas station on it can be worth money. So careful what you throw out. Everything has some collector value. Oh, I never even thought of having other people, if they're going through anyways, because they're there, then we could buy it off of them. Yeah. Ship it. We'll buy it. We do buy things from viewers that has happened many times before. Yeah, that's true. Where people send us stuff and we'll buy it from them. Uh, people have an idea, usually, of what we kind of buy and yeah. sell. Uh, let's see. Um, I'm just going to answer a couple more questions here. Uh, Easter Bunny. owned and looking to sell packed with four generations of things. Was that the gas station one? Um, yeah. Well, that would be really, really cool to go through that. Yeah. We have all that. Um, Marianne Brown says, are you interested in moving or buying a farm type property or staying in, in the city? 
Kind of both. Mm -hmm. um, what we'd like to do is find an acreage very close to the city. Um, so we have a bigger yard, like probably a few acres would be nice, um, like two to three acres, but also have the convenience of being only a few minutes from shopping. Cause I'm forever going out and chipping things off. Um, yeah. we're, we're always off doing things. So it's important for us to have that. Plus, Melissa works in town, I work in town. So it's hard to find uh, because we don't want to give up the city life, but we still want to have the acreage living life. So that's a very hard, <laughs> that's not impossible, but it is difficult. <laughs> yeah. Would a you, bit of a challenge. I would not build a 10 car garage. I would like to have a uh, oversized three car garage. Yeah. I need to, I need to put limits on myself because what I imagine if you had to heat that, you can only drive one car at a time anyway. Like already I'm kind of pushing the, the limits of what a person needs for vehicles. I mean, we got the store vehicle. I've got a couple of classic cars already. I'm, we're pretty good when it comes to cars. Um, it's just, there's no space for me to work on things. So if I ever did get another project or if I wanted to do woodworking like Josh is doing, um, I don't have the space for that right now. And for me, that would be, I don't know, halfway done my trip around the roller coaster here. I wouldn't mind having some of my life where I have a little workshop to work in or something. So we're going to aim for that. Is there anything, uh, what is your holy grail? Something you've longed to find, but haven't come across yet. Um, that's probably a hard one. Things that would make me really super happy to find, I don't know, like a, a shoebox full of old 50s and 60s Rolexes would be cool. Cause I, I'm an old watch guy, like I love old watches. So I, I think that would be really cool. Um, you know, I still get excited when I find boxes of toy cars. <laughs> like if I'm in somebody's basement and there's like, I, I found when we went to out east to Nova Scotia, I was digging through the guy's storage unit and I found that Hot Wheel wheel full of red lines. That was cool. Yeah. Like finding a big box of toy cars, that would be really cool. So I don't know, just fun stuff. Um, Miss Toot says, hi from South Yorkshire, England. Uh, I bought loads of jewelry. I uh, love it all. been following you since the Potter's House. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Hopefully it got there in the mail okay and everything, but uh, appreciate you guys following from all over the world. Um, where our kids have to change schools? Hopefully not. Um, I'm hopefully hoping not. I'll just drive because I think it's hard enough when you switch up your whole life. I want to keep as much stability as possible with the kids. Yeah, we um, we insulated our current garage and I put a heater in it so I can work in our garage, but it is just a small two-car garage. It's like a very squishy two-car garage. It's a squishy, like, um, our neighbors, when they drive in, if you're on the passenger side, they let that person out and then they pull in the garage because it's yeah. so hard to get in and out of both doors. You could, I don't know if you could. Like the, It would be very difficult. Yeah. I'll barely be able to fit the cars we have in our garage. And so I've kind of come to the conclusion, I don't want to just move for a garage, but we would also like to have a bigger yard. Melissa would like a bigger garden. We'd have to have some chickens at some point. Um, yeah. yeah. So there, there's things we want to do that also, we're not Also, like eventually when we're allowed to get together with people, having a little bit more living space, not a whole lot, like the size of the house that we have is perfectly perfect already. But if I could have a spoiled request, slightly more living space so that we could have my family in here when we can. Cynthia, tell your brother, Cynthia uh, says, my brother has a box of red lines he wants to sell. Yeah, uh, email me. Um, don't write through, uh, uh, don't leave a message for me on YouTube and, and wait for an answer because I don't check the messages on YouTube very often. Um, best to email our store at curiosityedmonton at gmail.com. If you're not sure what our email address is, you can just Google up our, our shop. Google it up <laughs> and it'll come up there. But yeah, if you guys have like a old Hot Wheels from like the 80s or prior, like Red Lines or old Hot Wheels, I buy that stuff all the time. Uh, you probably have stuff sitting in your basement. In fact, I would do an unboxing of it on camera if it ends up coming. I'd be super excited. We do have a basement now. <laughs> yeah, we have a basement here at our house. That's where Stephen lives. <laughs> yeah, well, Stephen we is, is not. Basement. It's a finished basement with a living room and a bedroom. He has like he made like a little art studio down there, and our freezer and everything's down there in storage. Yeah, it's basically and like bedroom, his own little St Stephen apartment going on down there. I think he likes it. I can't. So we have to find something that's similar for him. Tony too. wrote back in the day. I bought a pickup for my dog and an acreage for my horse. <laughs> Uh, this overstuffed house says I have red lines where they're not in the greatest shape. Doesn't matter. I will buy your red line Hot Wheel cars, even if they're in bad shape, because there are people who fix them. So there you go. Unless they're a um, million dollars. <laughs> uh, Nick Carlton says, what color is the Rolls Royce? It's silver. It is, um, the original factory color, which was a really nice bright silver. That's what you put it back to. Everyone wants me to get a goat. You guys, I don't need a goat. What am I going to do with a goat? It would keep I'm our lawn down. 
Yeah. She then, would too. Yeah. But then I don't want to just have an, another pet though. And I'm not going to drink goat milk. It'd be great if we had a sheep, we could teach you to say your name. It could say, Nell. Oh, <laughs> Alexander does that Nell. all the time. It drives me crazy. <laughs> does it drive you crazy? Yeah. And it would be closer with a goat saying Mel than a mm. sheep. Our, uh, oh, uh, Linda says, did you sell your other shop or is it still rented? It's, it's <laughs> up for sale. Um, our old location, we still own it. Uh, it's up, it's up for sale right now. We've had renters in this whole time. So, um, still have it. Would like it to sell or trade it. Actually, my friend Dale has a use for it. I have a friend who could actually really use that space. Um, and I would trade him for like random stuff too. If he was really interested, I would trade him for crazy things to get him that space. I'm one of the only people I think that I know that doesn't really like goat milk. I think it could be all in my mind, but if you guys have ever had to rinse your mouth with, uh, hydrogen peroxide for any reason. It's like milk with a little splash of hydrogen peroxide taste. Mm -mm, it's not for me. <laughs> goat milk? All the goat milk drinkers like are going to be goat, mad at you. It tastes like goat smells. <laughs> uh, Teresa Clark says, no fun being a landlord. Uh, it's not so bad, really. Well, I mean, we have amazing tenants, so like, I mean. Yeah, I mean, when something does happen, like the sewer line got clogged, it's stressful. But, you know, luckily we know everybody out in that town, so it was easy to get it um resolved in a hurry within an hour basically uh but yeah i don't want to our plan was never to be landlords our plan was to only have exactly what uh what we need um where did you get your rolex fixed i have an old 40s oyster from my father-in-law that runs slow um if it's running slow there's an adjustment that can be made inside the watch itself it actually has a, a lever inside that can be moved slow or fast you could do that um so it might be a really easy fix um, a lot of times you have to send a Rolex back into Rolex. It's very expensive to get it fixed or worked on. Um, I do have a couple people in town that have worked on them for me though, um, in Edmonton here, but, uh, they were having trouble with their shop during COVID. So I'm not sure if they're still around or not. Uh, let's see. Uh, um, there's so many people saying I'm never drinking goat milk. Now there is something to goat milk because they recommend it when you are sick. So, I mean, we might be missing out on something really beneficial, but it, I just... Um, maybe it's like, maybe baby. maybe people use them for goat yoga so that if they're like crawling around on your back or whatever, whatever goat yoga is, that if you're thirsty, you can just be like... No, Alexander! Straight oh, shot of goat milk. You're like, this is awesome. I'm getting my workout and I'm getting goat milk at the same time. No, I feel like that needs to be a vlog on our, our on its own uh, so that we can see how that actually worked out. <laughs> That's why you can't do cow yoga. A, you'd be trampled to death. And Oh my gosh. Yeah, I've said it before. First person who tried milk was probably a pervert. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's like, yeah, I'm going to get in on that. Nope, there's something wrong with you. Anyway, and don't think about it too closely, folks, because you know it's true. <laughs> first, oh my gosh. first cave person or whoever it was that saw a cow and decided to try some of that. Uh, well, you guys, if you ever thought that we really uh, censor what we say, now you know we don't. <laughs> <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah, anyway, <laughs> people are making barfing sounds now. <laughs> yep, there you go. Cold goat's milk is fine. Warm is bad. I see somebody <laughs> saying that there is a 58 Jag for sale in the U.S., I can't, you know, the challenge with buying a car in the United States is getting it across the border. And then when it gets here, it has to be in perfect running condition. This car that I, the Rolls that I bought, the reason it's been in the shop for so long, other than the fact that, you know, it's living up to all expectations of a Rolls, where you're like, it's in the shop more than it's out. <laughs> I've owned the car for like a year and a half. I've never even driven it once. So there's that. But the main problem is that when you get a car from out of province or from out of country, you have to um, you have to get everything done to it to make it absolutely perfect. So you have to make sure the tires are good, the bearings are good, the brakes are good, that the, all the signal lights, headlight, it has to be like a brand new car. So you can imagine the complications involved with taking a car that was infested by rats and raccoons and making it perfect for road use again. Um, but thankfully, we're at the tail end of that. We're, we're about a week away from getting it out of the shop and then it will have Alberta license plates and I can drive it. And I wanna enjoy it for just one summer at least before things go. Um, but yeah, there's that. Uh, I can't, he got stopped. Happy first. Mm, oh, I have a rainbow on my face. So Melissa has a crystal in the window. I, I saw this little, uh, you know, a little prism and it's supposed to make rainbows. And I like having little rainbows on the wall, but I didn't really think about how it would be for our filming space. Well, that's all right. <laughs> Um, but guys, thank you so much for, um, everything that you've, um, contributed. Uh, if you want to check out the Betty Joan Rack Foundation, you can check I'll that out. 
Um, it's ARMTA, and I hope you guys have a wonderful day. We'll see you all soon, everybody, and uh, check out the auction too, kauctions.ca. Look for the Stan Reynolds estate sale. We'll see you guys soon, and bye for now, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye.